The USS William D. Porter, often referred to as the Willie D., was a Fletcher-class destroyer that entered service on July 6, 1943. Soon after its commissioning, the William D. Porter left Orange, making stops in Galveston, Texas and Algiers, Louisiana before setting course for Guantanamo Bay, Cuba on July 30, 1943 for its shakedown cruise. Completing the shakedown in August, the destroyer briefly visited Bermuda, then proceeded to Charleston, South Carolina, arriving there on September 7. After undergoing post-shakedown adjustments in Charleston, the vessel set sail for Norfolk, Virginia by the month's end. For approximately five weeks, it participated in battle drills off Norfolk, with the USS Intrepid and additional units of the Atlantic Fleet. On November 12, 1943, the destroyer left Norfolk to join the USS Iowa, which was transporting President Franklin D. Roosevelt to the Cairo and Tehran conferences in North Africa. A mishap occurred as William D. Porter was leaving Norfolk, damaging a docked sister ship with its anchor while backing up. Despite being moored alongside the USS Cogswell and USS Young, no damage reports were filed by any of the ships during early November 1943. The following day, a depth charge accidentally released from William D. Porter caused Iowa and its escorts to perform defensive maneuvers, mistaking it for a German U-boat attack. However, official logs from both William D. Porter and Iowa made no mention of a missing depth charge or a U-boat pursuit on November 13th, although they recorded a boiler issue on William D. Porter that temporarily disrupted its position in the formation. On November 14th, at President Roosevelt's behest, the Iowa showcased its anti-aircraft defenses in a drill, releasing balloons as targets, some of which drifted towards and were shot down by William D. Porter. During a subsequent torpedo exercise meant to simulate an attack on Iowa, a live torpedo was accidentally launched from William D. Porter, directly threatening the Iowa. In an effort to alert the USS Iowa of an imminent torpedo threat, the William D. Porter initially attempted to use signal lamps due to strict orders for radio silence. The destroyer mistakenly indicated the wrong direction and then incorrectly signaled that it was reversing, not that a torpedo was launched. Driven by urgency, the William D. Porter broke radio silence with a coded message warning Iowa of the torpedo. After identifying the source of the alert, Iowa executed a sharp maneuver to evade the torpedo. Upon hearing of the threat, President Roosevelt requested his Secret Service aide to wheel him to the battleship's edge for a view. The torpedo ultimately exploded harmlessly in Iowa's wake, about 3,000 yards behind it. This incident led to a humorous greeting among U.S. ships towards the William D. Porter, jesting, don't shoot, we're Republicans, given Roosevelt's Democratic affiliation. The ordeal from the torpedo's launch to its detonation spanned roughly four minutes. Subsequently, the William D. Porter and its crew faced an inquiry in Bermuda regarding the mishap with the Iowa. Chief Torpedo Man Lawton Dawson, responsible for not disarming the torpedo properly, was sentenced to hard labor. However, President Roosevelt pardoned him, recognizing the incident as an accident. Despite rumors, Lieutenant Commander Walter retained his command until May 30, 1944, and went on to achieve the rank of Rear Admiral. The destroyer's log during its stay in Bermuda from November 16 to 23 made no mention of the crew being detained. On November 25, the William D. Porter returned to Norfolk to prepare for deployment to the Pacific, setting off on December 4th and passing through Trinidad to the Panama Canal by December 12th. Heading to San Diego, the ship stocked up on cold weather gear and other essentials from December 19th to 21 for its mission in the Aleutian Islands. Arriving at Dutch Harbor, Unalaska on December 29th, the destroyer joined Task Force 94. From January 2nd to 4, 1944, it traveled from Dutch Harbor to Adak, conducting training before setting sail for Hawaii on January 7th. The William D. Porter reached Pearl Harbor on January 22nd, where it stayed until February 1st, then escorted the USS Blackhawk back to Adak, arriving nine days later. Over the following four months, the destroyer undertook routine duties with Task Force 94, primarily focusing on anti-submarine patrols in the Aleutian Islands. On May 30th, 1944, Lieutenant Commander Walter was succeeded by Commander Charles M. Keyes as the commanding officer of the destroyer. Departing Attu on June 10th, the ship, alongside Task Force 94, 
made its way toward the Kuril Islands, arriving on the morning of June 13th. They began bombarding the island of Matsua at 0513. Within 20 minutes, an unidentified surface target was detected by William D. Porter's radar, approaching at speeds over 55 knots from the port quarter. Radar operators tentatively identified it as a hostile PT boat, prompting the ship to shift its focus and engage the new target. The target vanished from radar shortly after, likely destroyed by the task force's gunfire. After completing their mission, the task force withdrew from the Kuril Islands to refuel at Atu. On June 24, the destroyer, as part of Task Force 94, embarked on its second Kuril mission. Encountering increasingly thick fog over two days at sea, the fleet reached Paramushiro on June 26. Amidst dense fog with visibility limited to approximately 200 yards, the ship executed its bombardment before rejoining Task Force 94 to head back to the Aleutians. A series of training exercises filled the month before its third and final Kuril mission. Setting out from Kulok Bay on August 1st, the mission was eventually aborted due to adverse weather and the presence of an enemy reconnaissance aircraft, marking the mission's only significant incident. The William D. Porter anchored in Massacre Bay, Atu, on August 4th. Following a month on anti-submarine patrol, the destroyer left the Aleutians for a short maintenance period in San Francisco in preparation for reassignment to the Western Pacific. After completing repairs, it departed San Francisco on September 27th, arriving in Oahu on October 2nd for two weeks of training operations. Continuing westward on October 18th, the ship reached Sea Adler Harbor Manus in the Admiralty Islands 12 days later and soon set off to escort the USS Alshane from Hollandia to Leyte. Although arriving too late for the initial Leyte invasion, the William D. Porter encountered combat conditions soon after anchoring in San Pedro Bay, defending against Japanese aircraft attacks. Despite the successful downing of enemy planes during these engagements, the destroyer's mission mainly involved escort duties between various locations in the Pacific. On December 21st, while en route from Leyte to Mindoro, the ship faced enemy air assaults again. Despite engaging with its main guns, the initial aircraft attacks did not damage their targets. However, subsequent encounters saw the destroyer and its allies successfully downing several enemy planes with the remaining attackers withdrawing. Throughout the night, enemy aircraft continued to shadow the convoy without mounting further attacks. Before the next dawn, the William D. Porter destroyed an abandoned enemy landing craft. Completing its escort mission, the destroyer returned to San Pedro Bay on December 26 to prepare for the upcoming invasion of Luzon. Assigned to Vice Admiral Jesse B. Oldendorf's Lingayen Fire Support Group within the Bombardment and Fire Support Group, TG-77.2, the William D. Porter set sail from San Pedro Bay on January 2, 1945 and linked up with her group in Lady Gulf the next day. The fleet navigated south via the Surigao Strait, traversed the Mindanao Sea, skirted Negro's southern edge and advanced northward along the western shores of Negros, Pane, Mindoro and ultimately Luzon. Upon nearing Luzon's southwestern coast, the fleet fell within range of enemy aircraft stationed on the island. Starting January 5th, the force endured attacks from planes, including kamikazes. Initially, William D. Porter remained unengaged thanks to the combat air patrol's defense. However, during a late raid at 1650, the destroyer engaged three attacking planes around 1713, though the dimming light made it difficult to assess the outcome. This attack saw the cruiser USS Louisville and the escort carrier USS Manila Bay sustained significant kamikaze damage. Before the morning of January 6, the destroyer, along with her group, entered Lingayen Gulf to commence pre-landing bombardments. Enemy aircraft sporadically harassed the bombardment group throughout the day. That evening, William D. Porter targeted shore defenses and subsequently downed a lone aircraft followed by a Mitsubishi G-4M Betty bomber, returning to its main task of shore bombardment thereafter. Following the January 9th landings, the destroyer shifted focus to providing call fire and nighttime harassment in support of ground forces. From January 11th to 18, she patrolled off Lingayen Gulf with TG-77.2 to guard against enemy surface threats, later continuing her support role and enhancing the Gulf's air and submarine defenses. 
On February 3rd, she bombarded deserted enemy barges to prevent their use against the invasion efforts, or for evacuations, then carried on with her defensive duties until February 15th, when she left the Gulf to escort the USS Lindenwald and USS Epping Forest to Guam. After a brief return to Lingayen Gulf, William D. Porter proceeded to Leyte to gear up for the Okinawa assault. She stayed in Leyte through early March, then practiced gunfire with the Western Islands Attack Group off Kabugan Island before departing for the Ryukyu Islands on March 21st. Upon arriving on March 25th, she supported the Karama Reto occupation, offering anti-aircraft and anti-submarine protection, and conducting fire support against minimal resistance on the Karama Reto islets. With the onset of the Okinawa main assault on April 1st, William D. Porter joined Task Force 54, under Rear Admiral Morton L. Deo, providing fire support for Okinawa's capture, defending against submarines and aircraft, and safeguarding minesweepers. From April 1st to May 5th, she fired over 8,500 rounds of 5-inch shells at both shore and aerial targets, adding five more aircraft to her combat record amidst the relentless air assaults on the invasion force. In response to relentless air attacks from Kyushu and Formosa, the American forces set up a perimeter of radar picket ships around Okinawa, a role the William D. Porter adopted in early May. From May 5th to June 9th, she served on picket duty, alerting the fleet to incoming enemy air raids and directing fighter planes to intercept. Her own anti-aircraft guns downed an enemy aircraft, and the fighters she guided were credited with destroying seven additional enemy planes. During the initial stages of the Battle of Okinawa, there were claims that William D. Porter inadvertently inflicted damage on the USS Luce. However, this incident is absent from wartime reports that detail the sinking of Luce on May 4, 1945. At that time, William D. Porter was anchored at Hagushi, while Luce was positioned north of Aguni Island, over 30 miles distant. On June 10, 1945, William D. Porter was the target of a distinctive and ultimately fatal kamikaze assault. An outdated Aichi D-3A Val dive bomber unexpectedly emerged from the clouds at 0815 and headed directly for the destroyer. Although the ship dodged the initial impact, causing the plane to crash into the sea nearby, the bomber's explosives detonated beneath the porter, lifting the vessel from the water before it crashed back down, disabled by the underwater explosion. The impact resulted in lost power, ruptured steam lines, and several fires. Despite the crew's strenuous efforts over three hours to extinguish the fires, mend the damage, and salvage the ship, their endeavors proved futile. Merely 12 minutes after the command to evacuate was given, William D. Porter tipped over to starboard and descended stern first into the sea. Remarkably, there were no fatalities among the crew. The ship was officially removed from the Naval Vessel Register on July 11, 1945. For its contributions during the Second World War, William D. Porter was awarded four battle stars.